मिस्टर रत्नवेल मिस्टर रत्नवेल आई विश टू पुट माय फोर्थ माय व्यूज ऑन द अप्रोप्रिएशन बिल एंड द फाइनेंस बिल 2015 ऑन बिगाफ ऑफ ऑल द आना डीएमके द फाइनेंस बिल इज ए स्टेजरी नेसेसिटी टू अप्रूव द बजट प्रपोजल्स फॉर दिस फाइनेंशियल ईयर आवर रिस्पेक्टेड लीडर மக்களின் முதல்வர் டாக்டர் புரட்சி தலைவி அம்மா ஹஸ் மேட் எக்ஸிகூட்டிவ் கமெண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் தி பட்ஜெட் ப்ரப்போசல்ஸ் த்ரூ ஏ ஸ்டேட்மெண்ட் இயர்லியர் ஐ விஷ் டு ஹைலைட் சம் ஆஃப் தம் தட் கன்சர்ன் த ஸ்டேட்ஸ் பர்டிகுலர்லி மை ஓன் ஸ்டேட் தமிழ்நாடு தி ஃபினான்ஸ் மினிஸ்டர் ஹஸ் கிளைம்ட் கிரெடிட் ஃபார் ஏ டேன் அரவுண்ட் இன் இந்த எக்கனாமி அண்ட் ரெஸ்டரேஷன் ஆஃப் மைக்ரோ எக்கனாமிக் ஸ்டெபிலிட்டி ஒயில் தர் ஹவ் பீன் சம் பாலிசி ஆக்ஷன்ஸ் we are all aware that this process has been aided by favorable global factors especially the fall of petroleum prices unfortunately many taxation actions actions of the government of india have meant that the drop in petroleum prices has not been fully passed on to consumers but the government is quick to increase the price of petroleum products as far well as done by on the first may this year the increase in prices of petrol and diesel affected by oil marketing companies will result in the rates of all commodities going up the lives of ordinary people will be affected due to this as stated by our respected leader amma the hike will result in inflation going up further the exciting price fixation formula for petroleum products products should be changed the conversion of rupees 4 per liter out of the specific duty on petrol and diesel into road chess implies that the state governments are being deprived of the shareable revenue while the abolition of wealth tax and its replacement with a surcharge of 2% and the super rich is a pragmatic move i appeal to the government <coughs> that the proceeds of the surcharge should be made shareable with the states there are also attempts to transfer the burden of expenditure on a number of schemes on to the states while there has been considerable talk about cooperative federalism and team india which are to offer the states a much greater role in the task of economic development of the nation the actual measures taken in the budget have disproved this rhetoric while the 14th finance commission has increased the shareable element of, out of the divisible pool from 32% to 42% the central government has found numerous ways to retrieve the increased devaluation tamil nadu has already been unfairly treated by the 14th finance commission in the manner of horizontal distribution of tax devaluation due to the adoption of horizontal distribution criteria which hurt the state especially the reduced weight for the 1971 population removal of fiscal discipline as a criterion the increased weight accorded to area and per capita income distance and the inclusion of absolute forest area as a new criterion have worked against the interest of tamil nadu in this context if the state is required to take an on an additional burden of expenditure on central government priorities this is an unfair expectation and outcome further in centrally sponsored schemes the states share should be limited to a maximum of 20% of the scheme cost of in order to ensure that the states own expenditure priorities are not distorted in the previous budget estimate rupees 575000 crores was provided for plan expenditure this has been reduced to rupees 4 lakh 75 532 crores in revised estimate 2014-15 however for 2015-16 the plan expenditure is further reduced to rupees 4.65 lakh crore only the central assistance to state and union territories plan is reduced from rupees 3.38 lakh crores in 2014 and 15 to to rupees 2004 lakh crores for 2015-16 which is an unprecedented cut of 39.64% the 
This is a huge reduction compared to the previous two financial years. While there are proposals to rationalize the subsidies to check leakage under the gifts, there should be no reduction in the benefits occurring the poor through such subsidies. Our benevolent leader, Purushitlavi Amma, repeatedly cautioned that while the direct benefit, benefit transfer mechanism is very effective for conditional case transfers, as Tamil Nadu has already demonstrated, it should not be blindly extended fertilizers and food grains where availability of commodities is an important consideration. The recent attempt of the Reserve Bank of India to introduce DBT in paying interest to farmers on short-term crops loans should be nipped in the bit. Such in a move will wean away large chunk farming community from farming activity and that will be disastrous for the nation at large. We observe that there is a move to allocate substantial sums of money for the industrial carriers in Gujarat and Maharashtra. I request you not to ignore the other states. Adequate funds should be made here, available for the Madurai Tutukudi and Chennai Bangalore carrier also. No incentives to encourage the states to join the GST regime such as the promised GST compensation have been announced. The lack of concrete measures for building confidence among the states to implement GST is disappointing. I want to emphasize a point on education to fulfill its statutory responsibilities as promised by our respected leader. The government of Tamil Nadu would continue to admit children belonging to weaker section and disadvantaged groups under the 25% reservation category in unaided private schools in the academic year 2015-16 also. Therefore, I appeal to the government to ensure that the provisions of the RTE Act are strictly adhered to the to by the Ministry of Human Resource Development and the reimbursement of expenditure in guard by Thank you. schools in Tamil Nadu amounting to rupees 97.04 crores is reimbursed urgently. I also request that the Ministry of Human Resource Development may be asked to ensure that suitable changes are made in the Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan framework to bring it in line with the provisions of the RTE Act and also to remove the uncertainty surrounding the educational prospects of children belonging to weaker section and disadvantaged groups who seeks to benefit from the provision of the Act. With these words, I conclude. Ah, thank you.